Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and I'm super pumped about today's video. Today we're going to talk about the five reasons you should not start an electrical company. And this goes for any business, not just electrical. Yesterday I told you the five reasons that you should, and I gave you five reasons and all the glory and all the good things that come from owning your business and those benefits that you're going to start enjoying after two to five years. Today we're going to talk to you about the five reasons you should not start your business. And in the same way, I didn't tell you any of the downside uh, yesterday, I'm not going to tell you any of the the good side today. Today we're going to talk about the reasons that you shouldn't and all of the stress and the things that come with it. One thing I want you to never say on this channel is that, that I misled you in some way or, or told you or uh, sold you some type of dream that didn't exist. I want you guys to know the truth about this. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about um, you know what it really takes and what it really looks like to run an electrical company and then on Friday if you're ready and you're interested and it's time for you we're going to go ahead and start teaching you how to start your own company. I am the electrical code coach. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, let's jump right in. So the first reason that you're not going to want to start your own electrical company is the stress. I cannot describe the level of pressure and stress you get when you're responsible. Not only responsible for estimating the job, then responsible for getting the material and pulling the permit, then responsible for executing the job being completed. OK, then you have to execute and make sure that the permit gets passed and that you pass your inspection. Then you have to make sure you get paid and pay all those involved in making that happen, including your supply house, your permit ladies or men, whoever takes your permits. Also paying your employees, OK, and keeping the gas and everything floating to get it going. That's just one job. Now 5x that. You got five jobs going on, five permits, five material lists, all these different things. Plus, you have to pay employees for five different jobs. So the stress. I'm telling you, and the stress that other people impose on you. One thing you learn um, as you kind of become callous over years is you learn how to just deal with people. People will wait until the last minute. They'll have something smoking in their home and then wait until five minutes before they need you to call you and say, I need you yesterday. One of my favorite sayings that you may have heard me say on this channel is, is if somebody calls me and says, we needed you yesterday, well, you should have called me three weeks ago. If you needed me yesterday, you should have called me three weeks ago, and I'll tell people that. So with that being said, and, and you know, you say it in the right way, and, and you, you don't be rude or harmful, but um, one of my favorite all-time sayings says, lack of planning on your part does not necessarily constitute an emergency on my part. I'll say that again. Lack of planning on your part does not necessarily constitute an emergency on my part. OK, so with that being said, the stress that comes with run, running your own company, every person, I don't care who you are and what you operate. Remember, Monday, we talked about that stress risk tolerance. And, you know, it's one of those things that you got to be able to tolerate so much stress and you got to look at yourself and see what your tolerance is in running a business. But I'm telling you, every person, no matter who you are, at a certain level of stress, you change. You become a different person. You're snappy. You're you're upset. You can't sleep. You can't move. You're unmotivated. OK, so there's that certain level of stress and you've got to learn how to mitigate that stress, how to decompress. I call it some days I say I just want to go home and decompose for a little while. I just want to, you know, uh, you know just rot a little bit you know maybe you know take a shower get freshed up hit the sauna you got to make sure you're taking care of your body physically mentally make sure you're putting the proper nutrients in to be able to to manage that stress as it comes but i cannot explain to you the level of stress that you're going to face when you run your own company and it's all about the risk reward remember the higher the risk the greater reward but one of the things and i'm not going to sugarcoat it is the just ever mounting pile of stress that is on you but thankfully, there are things that can help us with that. I don't know where you're at in your faith. There's your faith. There's also your family. You have a great support system. Also, you got to take care of you. You got to take care of yourself. You know, the old the old adage was, I'll take care of you. You take care of me. But no, this is what we believe around here. I'll take care of me for you. You got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself or you can't take care of anyone else. Now, let's talk about the pressure. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the stress. The pressure of passing that inspection, of hitting payroll in the bank by Thursday afternoon at five, of the taxes that are coming. And we're going to talk later this week how to um, uh, delegate some of these things to other people and other companies who are professionals at it. But right now we're just talking about the pressure that's on you. Even if you hire a payroll company, you still have to get the money in the bank by Thursday evening or whatever your auto draft date is. And then you got to pay Uncle Sam. And then you got to worry about, you know, did your employees listen to you? Did they torque that connection? Did they tighten that screw? What's going on behind that wall right there? That's not counting 
ju that's just getting to the job, okay? Then you have to actually perform in front of the customer. Make sure you get paid. You got stressed out people. You got people freaking you out. I'm not trying to talk you out of running a business. I'm not going to paint you a flowery picture, though, of what it's like, okay? Yesterday, I told you the reasons that and the good things. Today, I'm telling you the truth about the bad. So the pressure there on you personally is just so great. Now, you can learn how to spread that pressure. You can learn how to delegate some of that pressure. But I'm telling you, the buck stops here. And that's a mentality that you need to have on you, that the buck stops here, that I am the final say. You are ultimately responsible. Okay, in our state, you can have one license, one licensed person, and 100 people running around working for them or her. With that being said, every connection they make is as if you did it yourself in a court of law. So you got 100 guys running around, 100 girls running around, whatever. Long story short, you got 100 people running around, and they're all making connections in your name. Now, you're not going to get charged with gross negligence if they purposely do something to hurt somebody, but you still would be on the chopping block, your company, your insurance. There's just a lot of pressure there. I don't want you guys to be confused about how much pressure is on someone who runs a business. Pressure to keep it going. Pressure to keep the work coming. Pressure to meet the payrolls. All these different different type of pressures. Then you've got the responsibility. You are responsible. You are the one with the name on the permit. You are the one with the name on the paycheck. You are the one. It's responsibility. It all weighs on your shoulders. It all rests on you in order to keep things moving. Now you'll learn as you get farther in the game, if you do your part, there's grace that comes in. Okay. There's, you know, the, you know, depending on where you're at in your faith, God comes in and helps you. He sends the work. He sends the, um, you know, the people to help you and the right connections and the right things. But ultimately, if you don't get up and do your part, the rest of it just falls to pieces, doesn't it? That's like anything in life, doesn't it? If you don't do your part in your marriage, if you don't do your part in your friendships, if you don't do your part in your work and your relationships, it all just falls to pieces, don't it? You have to do your part. And if you want to be a business owner, you have a larger part, okay? When you work for someone else, your part's about this big. It feels like it's the whole world, but it's not. Your part's just this big. But when you're the owner, your part's this big, okay? You are the one responsible, and you just have more of a role to play. Not that you can't do it, but it's there. And you are the one responsible, okay? It goes with the stress, the pressure, and responsibility. It's a three tiers. It's like a triangle, okay? It's like the Ohm's Law triangle, all right? But with that being said, it's letting you know that, hey, with that stress and with that pressure comes great responsibility. You are the one responsible for making it happen and getting it completed, and your name is on the job. Let's talk about the delusion. This is my favorite one. The delusion. Oh, the big money little wire and big checks it doesn't exist that you're going to be in your ball shorts at 10 a.m while your boys are out making you some money it's a fallacy it doesn't exist it's not real it's one of the greatest misnomers the delusion that i'm gonna have all this money in the bank and i'm gonna have all this time off and i'm gonna be able to go on vacations and i'm gonna be calling the shots and eh, you're gonna be the one on your hands and knees picking up wire strippings at 7 30 in the evening because your other men had to go home early because they had something going on they had to go to an event. They had to do something. They had to leave. You're on your hands and knees underneath a panel because it's your name on the line. It's your stress, your pressure, your responsibility. I want you to think about that. And then you, you know, you see these guys out ball and they got brand new trucks. What they got is they got debt up to their eyeballs. Okay. They got three trucks running around, all these fancy gear, all these fancy vans, and they're billing out $200 a day. Okay. When they should be billing out $1,500 a day. So don't play that game. Don't play in the delusion. I love, and, and I love Lowe's. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I'm just going to use them as a little bit of an example. They got the pro desk, all this pro stuff. Anything, if you look in the stores on all the shelves, it all says contractor. All this big, you're, you're playing into a lie. It's a big lie. Everybody wants to play contractor. Anybody can go down and get a business license. I'm going to show you on Friday and into next week how fast you can start a company, how fast you can start a business. I mean, we can start a business from home, online, with no employees, with no nothing, and instantly be legitimate. And you really are legitimate, but then you got to go out and you got to get it. Then you got to go out and you got to grind. And this delusion is, is that you're going to start this company and all of a sudden, all of a sudden become a pro. You got your pro account at Lowe's. You got your pro account at Builders First Source. They're giving you special parking spots. They're giving you pens and pencils and different things and all these different things. And then you go to Vistaprint.com and you, uh, you know, you get you a coffee mug with your company name on it, or you get you some pencils with your company name on it. Now you're a big shot. It's a delusion. It's fake. And they are selling you their business. Does that make sense? They're selling you and making money off of you and your delusion. And I'm not talking about you personally. I'm talking about the grand delusion that being a contractor, some great and fabulous thing. It's just not. It's a grind. And on Thursday this week, you guys are going to see exactly what we really do. 
I'm going to walk you through a 24-hour period of what it's really like to own your own electrical company. And I want you guys to be fully involved. And the last one is the politics. Whew. And this is top on the list. This is number one. Okay, if we were going down the list, let's say the other four were in no order. This is number one, the politics. Let me explain to you very quickly. Now, this is before you even get to the job to work. If you work for somebody else, all you have to do is go to the job and work. Okay, for the most part. Let me explain what they have to do before you can even go do the work. And if you're the owner and you're working with your tools on and you don't have anybody else helping you or you have a very few amount of people, this is everything you have to do and then you have to go work. So let's explain it. So let's say we get a job. We have the politics with the customer. You have to go in. You have to talk with the customer. You have to explain to them what's going on, why they need this fix. Then you have to sell them the fix um, and then be able to execute it. They tell you, okay, so you got the okay on a $5,000 job. Then you have to go to the supply house. Let's talk about supply house politics. You have the people in the front dealing with you in the front. You have to have good relationships with them. And these are some of my most valued relationships, but there's still just so many people involved and you'll see it by the end of it. So I go to get the parts. I talk with the people up front. I build relationships with them. Then they have their bosses in the back. Then some of them have their supply reps that you have to deal with. So you've got a very uh, a large circle right there. Then I got to go pull a permit for this job. When I get to the permit office, who's there? I have the permit ladies in the front, which are, you know, you, you start to build very valuable relationships with. Then you build a relationship with them the people who issue the permits then you may have to have somebody else that you call the permit into you have to build that relationship there then you have the relationship with the inspectors well what if the inspector's sick that day let's say you have a really good relationship you've built with that inspector but what if they're sick you have to have relationships with every one of the inspectors in the offices okay then that is just the permitting part now we got to go to the power company you need power pulled on this job so you got to call dispatch Maybe you even have to call engineering. So there's two people right there. You have to talk to the ladies in the front at the permit office. Then you have the men or women who actually come out and disconnect you, okay? So if you start looking at all of the relationships and the power that each one of them holds over your livelihood and your job, that's before I even get there. That's before I get there to start working. I have to deal with all that and then I have to go execute the work. Then after that, I have to go get paid. When I get paid, I have to deal with the money somehow. I have to take out for paying that material, which I have to visit those people again and pay them for the material. I've already paid for my permit, so I'm getting that money back. Then I have to deal with the taxes. I have to deal with income tax on the business. I have to deal with payroll tax. Um, you have to deal with your social security and unemployment benefits that you have to pay into. Then you have to deal with your self-employment tax if you're self-employed. You have to deal with capital gains tax if you own a company. This is on the exit after the work is completed. Then you have the customer calling you back, asking questions. So, I mean, there's just so much to this thing. And with the... You know, to finish on politics, with the people at the payroll company, with the people at your CPA, you have all of those in a relationship in politics. There's about 35 people in your very small sphere to do one job, okay? And these are all people that you have to build relationships, and, and they're some of my most treasured relationships, so... I'm not talking about it, but there still is all the variables. Well, what if you don't get the person that you normally deal with? What if they're out sick? What if they have something going on with their family? So there's so much politics to all this. And I just really encourage you as far as the politics go is to just be kind and polite to people, encourage people and be a giver in the community. OK, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, uh, you know, being encouraging, being an encouraging word, um, being kind to people. When they deal with, you know, 200 people a day. Everybody's a jerk. But you OK, you just you just kind of and you start to build these relationships relationships and some of my best friends are some of these people that I talked to you about so guys with all these things said with the stress the pressure the responsibility the delusion this some uh this stories of grandeur of all this owning your own company and then also all the politics I'm telling you those are the five reasons you should not start a business if you work for somebody else you go in you punch the clock you might deal with a little bit of what you feel like a stress but after you've listened to this video you're probably like man I got it pretty well made but it's also about risk reward but you can have all those benefits that I talked about yesterday yesterday in working for someone else but here's what you have to do 
You know what? We'll make a whole nother video about it. I was going to tell you a few tips, but I want a whole nother video about how to receive all those rewards if you work for somebody else because there's a process. It's a step. Everything's a process. Everything's a grind. So if you want to have that freedom, I know people who work for other people who have a lot of freedom, and I've had it myself. I've worked for other people and had a lot of freedom, but it comes with a certain level of service and a certain level of grind. So I just want to see you guys win. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I don't want to lie. I don't want to waste any of your time. So I am the Electrical Code Coach. If there's anything you need from me, you can just email me at electrical code coach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. Thank you.